Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing this year's Halloween special. I think I finally got one out at a good time. Last year I kind of struggled a little bit. Now if you noticed, I didn't really have much of a costume, but I did have a onesie. So I'm an avocado today. <laughs> you like my leaf? Now we're not going to be making something as terrifying as the Mighty Avocado. Today we are going to be making a Frankenstein monster inspired dragon. That's a lot to say. <laughs> but no, I've been wanting to do a piece like this for a while but never had enough time to put into the piece to do it the way I want to, to get it out in time for Halloween. But I've adjusted my schedule to where um, I'm giving myself more time and I'm just putting videos up when I'm ready so I figured perfect this will actually work. Oh, before I forget, um, I've been streaming a little bit more on Twitch. I'm trying to do that a lot more. And with Halloween, I've been kind of doing some drawing streams here and there. I did one where we did this cute little pumpkin. I'll throw it up on the screen. Um, and I plan on doing more sometime this month. So keep an eye out for that. And hopefully we can just hang out and uh, draw spooky stuff together. Okay, let's get to the project. <laughs> Okay, so I'm really excited to work on this piece. I think I'm going to try a few different things with it and probably do things a little bit out of order than I normally do with my art dolls, but we are going to start with the clay pieces first. So for the clay head, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to go about doing it, like the shape and everything, but I did know that I wanted the body and the face to have these patches to make him look like he's made out of different sections and stuff. So I just kind of started off with a base and messed around with a shape until I was like, you know what, this kind of feels like what I want it to look like. Every now and again I have one of these creatures where I have a rough idea of what I want to do but I'm really not sure on the finer details of it. And this was definitely one of those pieces where I just kind of figured it out as I went because I wasn't 100% sure how to do what I wanted to do with it. Once I have the basic shape figured out, which I kind of went with something a little bit longer and thinner, I'm then going to start adding the details. So we're just going to start off like it's a normal face. I'm going to have the mouth slightly open because I thought the teeth would look really cool for this piece. I'm going to start with making the upper lip, sketching out the shape of the teeth, and then adding the bottom lip. And then we'll just do the normal other facial features like the nostrils and adding the eyes. Once all the main facial features are figured out, I'm then going to kind of figure out how I want to break up his face into patches. For the top of the face, I kind of want to leave it more symmetrical, so I'm going to make the patches almost like a mask over his face. So I'm going to just break up the shape of the head and try and make some seams and stuff. And then I'm also going to do the same thing to the uh, bottom jaw underneath his head. I'm going to add my texture and detail to the different sections of the face and then I'm going to take a dotting tool and mark out where I'm going to have stitches holding these sections together. So I'm just going to kind of place dots where I think these stitches should be 
and then I'm going to roll out really thin clay and I'm going to add those stitches in place. Once I'm happy with all the detail that I add to the clay face, I'm then going to bake it. So our original Sculpey clay normally bakes at 275 Fahrenheit and for something this size about 45 to 55 minutes. And then for the hands and feet, I'm not going to be doing full on clay pieces for this. I'm going to be making the toes and fingers poseable. So I'm just going to be having the claws made out of clay. And usually with claws, I like to switch over to my epoxy sculpt clay because it's a lot more durable. So for the feet and the hands, I have these wire frames all set out. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add clay to the ends of each wire for each toe and finger. I'm going to kind of sculpt it to a point and then we're going to let these cure. Epoxy clay normally takes about 24 to 48 hours to completely cure. So I'm just going to set these off to the side, that way I don't have to worry about bumping them while they're curing. And then once the claws are done curing, what we're going to do is wrap these wire frames. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some yarn to the base of the claw. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and then I'm going to start wrapping. We're not going to glue anything until after we get everything wrapped, other than just starting it off. So I'm going to get all of the toes completely wrapped. I usually, to get a good thickness, go over it about two to three times. And then what we'll do is we're going to paint over our yarn with a fabric glue. This will kind of lock in the fabric, that way the yarn stays in place and just becomes like a solid thing. Also, fabric glue tends to be on the softer side, so it won't stop the toes and fingers from being poseable. Now normally I tend to paint my clay pieces and stuff before I start putting my art dolls together, but I feel like with this piece it's going to work better if I put everything together first and then paint it. So we're going to start on the sewing. So my idea for my dragon is kind of like a wingless dragon. I just did not want to try and figure out how to do the wings for this piece. I thought it'd look creepier without them. So it's just kind of like a dinosaur-esque style of body that's more stretched out. So I'm going to start by connecting all of the body pieces first and then we'll work on the arms and legs. So for the sides of the body, I have the neck, the main body, and the tail. So for each side, I'm going to sew these together and then I'm going to take both sides and I'm going to sew down the uh, belly section just all the way down starting at the base of the neck and I'm just going to use my sewing machine for this. I do have a piece that's going to go down the back of the dragon, but we'll connect that when we start putting everything together. Now for the arms and legs, each piece is going to have an inside section and an outside section, and we're just going to sew down the front of them for each arm and each leg. A lot of the times I normally have the back legs already connected to the body fabric pattern piece, but this time around I'm going to have it separate. And then for the hand section and the foot section, since everything is posable, part of that will be fabric. I have basically a top and bottom for each hand and foot, and we're just going to sew down one side to connect both pieces together, and we'll attach these to the arms and legs at the very end.
Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with our wireframe for the body and add the fabric for the body onto the wireframe. Now I have a bunch of other wires sticking out of the back section of this piece and that's because I'm going to be adding like these little metal like prong like things to give him more of a Frankenstein feel. So I just have these sticking out for now and we'll do more with them later. So right now I'm taking our clay head, I'm gluing it to the wire of the neck. Once that's in place, I'm going to glue the fabric for the neck around the base of the head and I'm also going to take that back piece of fabric and glue it at the very top of the head. Once all that's dried, I can start stuffing and closing up the body, starting with the neck and just going all the way down until I get to the end of the tail. And because I have these extra pieces of wire sticking out of the back, I'm just going to kind of keep going back and forth from each side as I sew so I can make it even. And I'm just going to sew around these wires so that they stick through the body. Once I have the body fully stuffed and on the wireframe, I can then start adding the arms and legs. I'm actually going to start with the legs first, and I'm going to take the fabric for the legs and sew it around where we have that wire sticking out for it. Once the fabric is sewn into place, I can adjust the wire frame for the leg and then add the wire posable foot at the end of it. So I'm just going to take that, wrap that in place, and then we can start sewing the fabric for the leg around the wire frame and stuffing it. So I'm going to start by sewing around those toes. I'm just going to take the fabric and kind of stitch in between them. And then as I get further and further up the leg, I'm just going to add more stuffing as I go until we get to where we can close it up. And then for the arms, it's basically the exact same thing. The only extra thing I have to do is add some holes for where the thumbs are going to stick through. So I'm just going to cut tiny holes in the fabric where the hands are and then just run that through and we'll stitch around it to just make sure that it's nice and tight around the thumb. Okay, so now that the body is put together, I really don't want these wires sticking out and poking me while I'm painting and doing anything else. They've poked me enough while I've been assembling the doll. So we're going to finish figuring out what we're doing with these. And I want them to look kind of like electrodes or probes or just electrical bits that are like making the um, creature live. So I'm just going to kind of decorate them a little bit. Um, I'm going to add something to the top of them so that they're not sharp. And I figured adding some extra wires and even some chains connecting them would look really cool. So again, just kind of winging it until it looks like a rough idea of what I want it to look like. Because I was still trying to figure it out as I was going. Once I'm happy with how those look, I'm then going to move on to painting. And before we add all the patchwork and everything, I'm going to try and get the uh, toes and the clay head to match the fabric of the body. So I'm going to roughly paint all of that, get it primered, blended. We're probably going to paint some of the fabric as well because I want him to look kind of grungy and stuff. So we're going to dirty up the fabric, add some markings here and there, and just try and make it look more beaten up.
for his claws. I'm just going to go with kind of a dark gray and go over them lightly. I feel like I'll probably touch these up later after we get more detail added, but I wanted to get them at least started. And then for the other features of the face, I'm going to kind of clean those up and figure out which colors I'm going to do for the patches. I think I'm going mainly for a green and red feel because I figured green would have more of that basic Frankenstein feel. Green is just used in a lot of Frankenstein artwork. And then red, I figured it would be a really good complementary color to the green, plus would make it look a little bit more on the gory side without having to full on add like bloody details to the piece because I didn't want to go super like dark and gory with it. After that, I worked on figuring out which patch section of the face I wanted which color. And right now I'm just working with the main body color, which is kind of that khaki, and then the green and red. So I decided that the face, I wanted the top half to be kind of split. So one side will be red, the other will be green. And then the bottom section, I just kind of broke up a little bit on the more random side, trying to leave it balanced at the same time. The fun thing about being more of a Halloween type piece or a spooky piece, I can go a little bit more messy with my paint job. Obviously I'm going to have my lines pretty clean, but when it comes to like adding the colors to the patches, I'm trying to actually make it look a little bit more splotchy and it kind of adds an extra creepy factor to not having everything super super clean and precise. So it's kind of fun to just kind of let go a little bit and be a little bit more messy with my paint job. And then finally for painting the stitches that are holding the pieces together, I needed a color that would stand out so you would see them. And I figured white would work really well for this. Now we're not quite done painting everything, but I need to add our fabric patches to the rest of the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want these patches first by pinning fabric to the body and laying everything out. That way I get a feel for how well everything looks before I start and then I can decide which color, which patch is going to be and start sewing them. Now to make the patches, I'm taking my mink fabric, but I'm going to have the backing the part of the fabric that's going to be out. So I'm going to be kind of sewing everything inside out at first and flipping it right side out, but the fabric will be inside out at the end. Now so that I don't lose track of where the patches are going, I'm going to be doing the body in sections. So I'll take my patterns off, make those patches, place them on the body. Basically I'm just stitching them in place on the body where I want them. And then I'll do the same thing with different sections. So I started with the neck, I moved on to a leg or the side of the body, I took those pieces of fabric off and made patches and attached them. And I just kept going until I had all the patches done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dirty up these patches so they match with the ones on the face. They're just too clean, so we're going to kind of paint around the edges and dirty them up, adding shadows. And then to match the colors a little bit more, I did add a little bit of a highlight to the green and red. Just a touch to make sure that they didn't look like they were a different color. So 
So I'm going to get the patches touched up and then what I'm going to do to finish off the piece is add those stitches and I figured the best thing to do would be just using white yarn for the stitches. So I'm going to use that and just kind of sew them in place. That way it looks like it matches the work that we did on the face. And then last minute I decided I wanted to seal our little metal decorative pieces with a bit of a sealant but I wanted to also add a bit of extra detail to it so I mixed in some glow-in-the-dark mica powder with that sealant and just kind of painted over them. I figured it would look really cool to have these kind of glow-in-the-dark. Okay guys, and here is our Frankenstein's monster dragon. I had so much fun with this project, even though it took forever. I knew it would because I wanted to really get all this extra detailing in with the patches and stuff. But it was a lot of fun because I could just kind of, I could make it messy and grungy and stuff. And I didn't have to go super like precise with the details. And it still looks really good. Now, like all of my art dolls that are not commissions, this guy will be on my website, so if anyone wants to buy him, give him a new home. Check the links down below. Um, I'll have links to different art supplies and stuff also down there in the description, so if you're curious on what I've used to make him, you can get a rough idea. Now, if you do buy anything through these links, it does help support the channel because they are affiliated links. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!